Hi there, so today we're going to be thinking about the cell structure in prokaryotes. So first of all, there's a prokaryote cell. If we were going to draw it at a really basic level, just look at it from the outside. Um, there's obviously a lot going on, but they are very simple. Now, on the outside surface, what you can often see are uh, things called pili. And these are uh, little sort of appendages, little sticky out bits. And these help the bacteria, the prokaryote, to attach to surfaces. Sometimes they're a bit longer than this, and sometimes they're also involved in reproduction. So that's basically what it might look like from the outside. Sometimes you'll also see that uh, bacterial cells, prokaryotes, have got something um, which may not come at the end. It, there may be, it may be on different parts, but it's something that looks a little bit like a tail. Uh, it's called the flagellum and it helps with uh, movement. We'll have a look at that a bit later. So this is what it might look like if you're looking at the cell from the outside. But what we need to do is basically sort of cut down through the middle and take a look at a cross section to see what's going on. So first of all, because it's a cell, it has a cell membrane. So here's our cell membrane of our prokaryote. And it's very similar to other cell membranes. We'll have a look again a bit more detail later on. Now, what all prokaryotes also have is a cell wall. But this is made of peptidoglycan, also known as murin. So it's not a cellulose cell wall like plants have. Um, it's not the same as the cell wall that fungi have. Peptidoglycan, um, the peptido part, tells you that it's got something um, to do with peptides. So it has peptides. It doesn't have, it's not protein, um, but it's peptides. So sort of um, small, just sort of a few amino acids joined together. And then the glycan tells you that it's got sugar. So it's amino acids and sugar forming a sort of a matrix. Um, and that is known as murin. You can use either of these two words to describe what the cell wall is made from. Now, some bacteria also have another layer around the outside, which is called a capsule. Um, and if they have that, it's just for added protection. It prevents dehydration um, and it prevents them being attacked by toxins and things. OK, so to think about what's going on in our cell, um, we're going to think about what the bacterial cell has to do, because um, that will help us rather than just thinking about a list of things. So let's say that what we've got here is some kind of nutrient molecule. Um, bacterial cells have to perform all seven signs of life. So one of the things they need is they need nutrition. But of course, um, it's just a single cell. So how is the bacterial cell going to get the nutrient molecules in this food molecule um, into itself? Well, this is quite a big chunk of food. So the bacteria is going to have to break that down into the small molecules, like amino acids, glucose, for example, um, in a very similar way to what humans might do in the digestive system. So to do that, we need uh, the, the bacteria needs enzymes. So... The bacteria needs enzymes so it can break down this food molecule. If we think about what we know already, how are enzymes made? Well, enzymes are made in ribosomes because they're proteins. Now, ribosomes in bacterial cell are called 70S. That's the size of them. They're smaller than the ribosomes you see in animal and plant cells, which are called 80S. So all of these ribosomes here, 70S ribosomes, they can be used to make proteins such as enzymes. But of course, you don't just have ribosomes. If you want to make enzymes, if you want to make proteins, then you need um, a code to tell the ribosome which amino acids to join together. And that code comes from the DNA. So bacterial cells also have, of course, DNA. And they have a long, uh, they have a, a loop of DNA. Now, I've stopped here because... When you draw a loop of DNA, it's important you draw it as a loop. So if you see here what I've done, in fact, let me go backwards and I'll do it again. 
So it doesn't matter how you draw it, so you wiggle it around all sorts of ways. But what you can't do is stop there, because at the moment this is not a loop, because there's one end and there's the other end. So you have to make sure that somehow those two ends join together. So now we have a single loop of DNA. This can be called a chromosome. The important thing is that there's only one of them. Very different to um, eukaryotes, humans for example, where you have lots of chromosomes, there's just one loop of DNA here. And the other important thing is that there is actually no nucleus. So there is nothing surrounding this, there's no uh, membrane, and in fact you will not find any membranes at all within this bacterial cell. It has a cell membrane, cell surface membrane, and that's it. So a defining feature of prokaryotes is that they have no membrane-bound organelles. Okay, so we've got our DNA and we've got our ribosomes. So if we want to make some protein, then we need to first of all uh, transcribe our DNA into some messenger RNA. That messenger RNA is then going to have to just travel over to the ribosome and then translation can take place to produce our protein. Uh, that protein can then just sort of self-assemble and we end up with a little tiny enzyme. Okay. Now, we're obviously going to make, the bacteria is going to make lots and lots of enzymes, thousands of molecules. So here we are, hundreds of enzyme molecules all ready to be released from the cell to digest this food molecule. So out they go, they can be released, and then the food molecule can be digested by those enzymes. There are other ways that bacterial cells, prokaryotes, can get their nutrition. This is just one example. And the reason I'm using this example is just to show how um, the, the parts of the, the prokaryote are important. So why do we have DNA? Uh, or sorry, why does a bacterial cell or prokaryote have DNA? Why does it have ribosomes? So that we can see um, the function of these parts. Some prokaryotes will get their nutrients in different ways. For example, they might um, photosynthesize. But we're not worried about that at the moment. So um, the other thing that prokaryotes are often able to do is actually move. They're actually able to move in the direction of various stimuli, so that's showing sensitivity. Um, and the way that they often do that is using the flagellum. So here we can see um, the flagellum at the end there. Now this flagellum is a bit like a tail, um, but what we've got here is like this is like a motor which rotates around. So this whole flagellum spins. And what that means is that our bacterial cell is able to move. There we go. So these nutrient molecules, so we're now talking about amino acids, glucose, etc., they need to come into the cell, and they can do that either by simple diffusion or, for example, facilitated diffusion, active transport, any of the normal ways that you would expect. Um, endocytosis doesn't happen in bacterial cells, but diffusion, facilitated diffusion, or active transport. So in they come across the cell membrane. And now, if they've come in by active transport or facilitated uh, by active transport, then energy is going to have been needed. So, how do prokaryotes get their energy? Well, they get it basically in the same way as eukaryotes do through respiration. But as we said already, they haven't got any membrane-bound organelles, so you won't find any mitochondria in here. But in terms of how respiration works, it's again really all about enzymes and proteins. You don't have to have mitochondria to do respiration. All you need is the enzymes and usually a membrane for those enzymes to um, be held in place. So if we say that this is our cell membrane, and then we have the cell wall. So if we're drawing diagrams, we 
usually draw the cell membrane as the line. So this, this single line represents the membrane and this whole section here represents a cell wall. But we know that the cell membrane is actually a phospholipid bilayer. Let's get rid of those lines as well. So this is what a cell membrane actually looks like. And we also know that in that cell membrane, just as we see in eukaryotes, there will be proteins and there will be enzymes. So in our bacterial cell is no different. So here we can see there are enzymes. That maybe is a protein carrier. We've maybe got a protein channel. And remember, the reason that we can have these, this is just these are proteins, and we know that the enzymes have got ribosomes, they've got DNA, so it's perfectly, it's perfectly easy for them to make these molecules. So if we go back to our cell, with all of our ribosomes, all of our DNA, and there's our flagellum, what we've also got then are lots of enzymes on our cell membrane. They'd be all around the cell membrane. So these enzymes, some of them, their job will be respiration. So the enzymes that are there can do respiration, which means that it can produce ATP, and that ATP can be used, as we've already seen, to help move substances like amino acids or glucose into the cell. The last thing we've got are plasmids. So these plasmids are also small loops of DNA. But as you can see, they're much smaller than our main chromosome. So these plasmids, this is one small circle of DNA. There might be several plasmids in a cell. And these plasmids um, would usually only have a couple of genes and they would be responsible for something like um, coding for the production of an antibiotic, for example. Okay, so that covers the basics of the prokaryotic cells and the, um, the structures within them and what their functions are.